Hello and welcome to our final video for section 6 of DMA 10 where we continue our discussion about exponents in the order of operations. Remember that last time we talked about exponent rules and we introduced the order of operations and then we did a few sample practice problems. In this video we're going to do some advanced practice and look at a couple of applications and word problems. Let's jump into some practice. As you can see in this example here, we have several uh, different operations going on here. Um, there's some addition here. There's implied multiplication here. Let's go ahead and draw in our time sign so we don't forget it. Um, and then we have, again, some more addition inside and some more implied uh, multiplication here. So um, let's remind ourselves of the order of operations, parentheses, exponents, then we multiply and divide from left to right, and then we add and subtract from left to right. Okay. So, first is parentheses. Um, there's a, we always want to work from the inside out. There's nothing to do in this innermost set of parentheses, so the parentheses that we're going to be working um, in first is this one right here. Okay, so what's the first operation? Do we add first or we multiply first? Well, uh, we follow the order of operations again, and it tells us that this multiplication step is going to come first. So the first thing that we're going to do is the positive 5 times the negative 3. When we do that, uh, positive 5 times negative 3, signs are different. We get a negative 15, so this is now a subtraction problem. We get a negative 15. Okay. And then we have to copy down everything else we haven't used. Okay, now we're still working in this set of parentheses here, or brackets, I should say. Um, now we have a subtraction problem that we're going to have to do next. The 26 minus the 15. That's going to be our next step. 26 minus 15 is going to be 11. Okay, and since um, we don't have to write the brackets now, since we've got it all down to a number, so now we have 11 times 2, and still that plus 4 out in front. Okay, so our parentheses are all done. We can check that off. Um, we don't have any exponents, so we can move down to multiplying and dividing. So uh, we have the 2 times 11 next. 2 times 11 is uh, a positive 22, so we get a plus 22 that 4 that we haven't used, and we're going to finish off this by adding um, those last two numbers together to get a positive 26. Here's our second practice problem. Again, we have a lot of different uh, operations going on. So uh, to attack a problem like this, um, when we have a fraction, we kind of imagine that the top is a set of parentheses around it, and the bottom has a set of parentheses around it. Okay, so we're going to have to work those down all the way till we get to one number before we can divide. Uh, keep in mind that there's this negative hanging out in front. Um, we're going to have to bring this with us for each step of the problem, so don't forget that. So the first thing that we're going to do on the top is our exponents. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do those. Um, we'll get, we still have the negative out in front. And then 40 minus 1 cubed, 1 times 1 times 1 is still going to be 1, so we bring in minus 1. And then uh, 2 to the 4th power, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2, 4, 8, 16, so minus 16. Okay, we just carry the negatives out, um, these negatives that were in front over, right? because uh, they weren't inside any parentheses, so they just got carried over, so that makes that a negative 1, and here a negative 16. So that's the first thing that we did on the top, was those exponents. On the bottom, the first thing that we're going to do is the um, what's inside the parentheses down here. And just to save space, I'm going to work a step from the bottom and a step from the top uh, as we go. So we're still going to have this 3 out in front, okay? And we do the 2 plus 5, which is 7. And we still have to add 2 at the end. Close that off. Next, um, on the top we're going to do our first subtraction step. Because remember we add and subtract from the left to right. And on the bottom we're going to do this implied multiplication here, the 3 times 7. 
So um, we're going to keep that negative out in front. It's not going anywhere yet. Um, 40 minus 1 is 39. And then still the minus 16 that we haven't used. 3 times 7 is going to be 21. Then we're going to add the 2 that we didn't use. For our final steps on the top and the bottom, we need to complete our subtraction on the top and the addition on the bottom. So, always keeping that negative out in front. 39 minus 16 is going to give us 23. Okay, and on the bottom, 21 plus 22 is 23. Great. So now we can do the division here. We're going to do this division here in the middle. Um, 23 divided by 23. 23 divided by 23 is 1. And if we bring down the negative um, that we had um, out in front, that gives us an answer of a negative 1. Now it's time for a word problem. John bought three neckties for $8 each and two shirts for $28 each. The sales tax on the purchase was $4.00. So he gave the cashier a hundred dollar bill, and write. Uh, we need to write a number sentence to determine how much change he should receive, um, and then we're going to evaluate it to find out how much change he has. So here's how we're going to attack this. The change. Well, write it as a sentence first. The change is going to equal the what he paid, the payment minus the cost. Okay. So the payment, he paid them $100. Okay. And then we need to subtract from that $100 the cost. Well, there's a whole bunch of different things that make up the cost. So we're going to make sure that we write this in parentheses. So um, the whole cost gets uh, added together. So three neckties for $8 each. That's the first thing. Um, we can find that by doing three times eight. And we're going to add uh, two shirts for $28. So that's two times 28. And then the sales tax is part of the cost, too. So we need to add that $4 in there. OK. So this is going to be our number sentence for um, the, the amount of change that he's going to receive. So um, we're going to start working in the parentheses. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do are our multiplication steps. And I'm going to do them both at once. OK. So we still have the 100 minus 3 times 8 is going to be 24. Plus 2 times 28, that's going to be 56. Plus the 4 that we haven't used. Okay, um, working in the parentheses, we're going to do that first addition. So we have 100 minus 24 plus 56. It's going to be 80 plus the four dollars in tax. We're going to finish that uh, addition inside there. So we'll have 100 minus 80 plus four is going to be 84, and we'll drop the parentheses now um, since we finished. Um, with everything in there and just got it down to one number. And then we're going to finish by doing 100 minus $84. So his change is going to be 16. All right, this word problem is going to require a lot of careful and critical reading. This spreadsheet contains data collected by a chemist. For each row, so the rows are here, 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 rows 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> the sum, that means addition, <clears throat> of the values in columns A and B is to be subtracted from the product of 6, product means times, 6 times column C. That result <clears throat> is then to be divided by 12 and entered into the column D. Use this information to complete the spreadsheet. So let's kind of write what this would look like algebraically. I know we haven't had a lot of talk about algebra, but I think we can make this work. So the sum of values in column A and B. So we're going to add A and B together and find their sum. 
is to be subtracted from. That means we take that away from the product of 6 and C. So 6 times C. And then we divide the whole thing by 12. Okay, so we've got the product of 6 and C. And from that we subtract the sum of A and B. Then we divide the whole thing by 12. So let's go ahead and do row 1. We're going to plug in these numbers, 20 for A, 4 for B, and 8 for C, and evaluate this. So um, we'll end up with 6 times 8 for C minus 20 for A plus 4 for B, and then divide by 12. Okay, uh, we'll do the parentheses first. Um, I'm going to move all the way up to the left over here. We'll get 6 times 8 minus, when we do that addition, 24. Still divided by 12. Okay. Now we'll do our multiplication. 8 times 6 is 48 minus 24. Divided by 12. Time to subtract on top. 48 minus 24 is 24. Still divided by 12. Now that we have a number on the top and a number on the bottom, we can divide. Uh, 24 divided by 12 is 2. So our number in column D for the first row will be 2. Now I'm going to erase uh, this and get a little bit of extra room, and then we'll do uh, row 2. All right, now let's do row 2. Um, we'll still have 6 times C is 16 minus 9 plus 3 divided by 12. Okay, moving over here to the left. Uh, parentheses first, we still have 6 times 16 minus uh, 9 plus 3 is going to give us 12. I wrote those parentheses in, but I didn't have to. Next, we multiply. 16 times 6, uh, six is going to be 96 minus that positive 12, minus 12, <clears throat> and still divided by 12. Subtraction time, 96 minus 12. This is going to give us 84 divided by 12. And 84 divided by 12 is 7. So our entry for column uh, D in row 2 is going to be 7. Last but not least, the third row. So we'll have 6 times 11 minus A plus B, 1 plus 5, divided by 12. Okay, parentheses first, we still have 6 times 11, minus 1 plus 5 will give us 6. So we'll have minus 6, divided by 12. Okay, when we do our multiplication, 6 times 11 is 66, minus 6, divided by 12. When we subtract, 66 minus 6 is 60, still divided by 12. And we do the division, 60 divided by 12 is 5. So our last entry for column D will be 5. And there you have it. So to review section 6 from DMA 10, uh, we started with introducing the exponent rules. Then we explored the order of operations and different ways to remember them. We looked at some practice problems, both basic and then some pretty advanced stuff. And finally, we ended up with some applications and word problems. Uh, stay tuned for Section 7. Good luck on your Section 6 work.